Hey guys, today's video we're going to be having a look at a single DIN head unit which has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay all within the single DIN form factor. This is by a company called Rimudi. Let's check it out. So I found this thing on Amazon and it interested me for two reasons. First of all, it's a single DIN with a touch screen which works with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And that's the first time that I've seen that within a single DIN form factor. And the other thing is that it was about 75 pounds, which is about $90, which makes it a very cheap Apple CarPlay and Android Auto device. Now, I'm a bit skeptical for two reasons. One being that they've called the brand Remoody on the Amazon store. And the other is that this actually has no brand name on it whatsoever. So it just looks like a generic unit that they've going to resell basically. So I thought it'd be fun to open it up and, and have a look. Don't forget, I don't get paid to endorse any company or product, including this Remoody system. So this video is more to do with my opinion as I'm unboxing it and setting it up. However, if you do want to buy one, you'll find a link in the video description below. Right, let's do it now. And here it is. And I can tell you straight away, this is literally the lightest head unit that I have ever tested. It is so light, it's like there's nothing to it. So let's have a closer look. So having a look at the front here, uh, the first thing that you're probably gonna notice is the fact that it has this lovely volume knob. I do like having a physical volume knob and it is something that a lot of you love to have as well. And it's got a nice textured side, so it does actually feel quite nice to use. And then you have these two silver trim parts on the left and right, and I think that adds to the aesthetic. But other than that, it does get a bit noisy on the front here. And you find with these cheaper units that they try to cram as much information onto the front of it as possible to show all the features that it has. And that is basically what they've done here. So these diamonds along the left-hand side here, these are not buttons. They are literally just things that are printed on here to say all these things are existing within this unit. And then you have mirror link and DSP written down here and then up here you have MP5, FM, like it literally just says everything that it does on the front and it takes away from the design of it. If, if that stuff wasn't here, this would actually look like a much, much better unit. Anyway, I digress. So we've got uh, two USBs uh, on the top and the bottom over here, which is cool. You have an IR sensor because this thing actually comes with a remote control. And then you have an auxiliary analog input here and a micro SD card input here so that you can put music or movies onto a card and playback from that. Looking on the top, you can see that it actually comes with a cage so that you can easily fit it within a single DIN environment. So on the back here, you can see that it has a standard ISO connection for power and speakers, etc. You've got a USB over here, then you have the reverse camera input here, and it does come with a reverse camera as well, which is cool. You've got another video input here. You've got an AV video input here. You've got a subwoofer out here, and then you have left and right outs as well. So these are pre-outs. You've got a left and right pre-out and a subwoofer pre-out here as well. No rear pre-outs. What else have they got in the box? Well, we have a reverse camera, so you don't need to buy one separately. I guess that's cool. Then it comes with this little thing here, which is an infrared remote control that can be mounted to your steering wheel. And that means that this needs to have direct line of sight to the head unit to be able to communicate to it to control it, which is normally fine if you're in a left-hand drive car, uh, because we're in a right-hand drive car, it needs to be mounted upside down so that it's on the right side of the steering wheel to communicate with this, but that's fine. At the end of the day, you've got some steering wheel remote control if you want it. And then it comes with an actual proper remote control. Maybe this is so that your backseat passengers can control the music or whatever 
as you're uh, driving along. And then they actually give you an external microphone, which is good for the hands-free side of things. And some ISO connection wires in case you want to wire it into a car which is not compatible with ISO. And there's a manual in that bag as well. Now, as it's a single DIN unit, I'm going to set it up in the jukebox test station in this studio. Um, it's going to be easier to do that than to put it into a double DIN standard car. So I'm going to do that now and then we're going to have a play. Let's have a look. So if you haven't been introduced to it already, this is the Jukebox test station here in the studio and it allows me to test Android head units from within the comfort of the studio. So all we need to do to turn the ignition on is press this button and we'll have a look and see how good it is. Okay, so we can see the lights have flashed on and off. Oh, MP5 car player. Welcome. and straight onto the radio. So it's fairly quick to boot up, uh, but before we start playing around with the radio, uh, let's go and have a look at the main dashboard. So this is the dashboard and you've got two widgets. On the left hand side, you have a radio widget. On the right hand side, you have local music playback. Along the bottom here, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth hands-free, the different modes. I have no idea what this is. And then we have the settings. If we go into the different modes, you can see Bluetooth hands-free, auxiliary analog input, you've got the DVR camera input, the equalizer, and over here is the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And if we just slide to the left here, radio, local music, local video files, local photos, and then the Explorer to actually look at the files if you had a micro SD card or USB actually plugged in. If we have a look at the settings, you can see that there's just basic stuff in here like language, setting the time and date. But the interesting stuff is integration of car so if we have a look you can find backlight here and if we tap this you can actually change this to be a specific color instead of jumping around so for example in a Saab we would want the lights to be green also with regards to car integration you have steering wheel settings here and this is obviously going to allow you to set up your steering wheel controls by connecting the wire to a canvas decoder so that's a good useful basic feature as well all right let's have a look at the radio so we're going to the radio and uh, let's just tune something in. Okay, so got a radio tuned in and to save that station, you push and hold one of these settings and it's gonna save it into the presets down here. So that's nice and easy as well. Now you will see that unfortunately there's no RDS, but you can still see the frequencies in the actual memories. So that's fine. Now whilst we're on the radio, you might notice that there is a graphic equalizer icon up here and that will give you some graphic equalizer settings that you can change the sound of this unit. Does it change the sound? Absolutely, yes it does. Does it change it in a way that makes me feel happy about what I'm listening to? Not really. This clearly doesn't have a very good amplifier or DSP chip, so when you modify this, it's kind of a software modification and it makes the sound really quite bad, especially when you're trying to increase the bass. All it really does is distort, even when it's connected to some very good speakers, which it's connected to at the moment. If you're not gonna to look to increase the bass or anything like that, then it does sound okay. Okay, time to talk about Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And I'm gonna start with Apple CarPlay. This is a wired system. You do actually have to plug it into the head unit, but what do you expect for the price? Let's just plug this in. Connecting in. And there we go. Okay, Apple CarPlay does actually function on that little touch screen, but let's see how good it actually is. So looking at this, it does actually look like normal Apple CarPlay as you would see on any other head unit, just on a much smaller screen. So if we tap this, you can see that we have all the apps and it does seem to be reacting quite fast to my touch, which is great. This is Waze. Waze is working okay. Yeah, the lag isn't that bad. The touch is working fine and audio uh, is working as well. Yeah, all right. So Apple CarPlay does seem to be working quite fine. However, what I have noticed is, say for example, you wanna to continue to listen to music, but you wanna go and change the sound settings. If you press the home button, it stops the music. So it closes the CarPlay app. 
and then it starts the radio back up again, which you don't want to listen to. Now, if you did want to change the sound of your music whilst you're in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, there is actually a way to do it. What we do is we press the knob in here, and as you can see, it goes to adjust bass, and then you've got adjust treble, you've got balance, fade, and then adjust the equalizer. Let me try to show you how bad it is if I try to increase the bass. So this is normal. Basically what happens is it's some kind of reverberation happening when you try to increase the bass. It's not cleaner or it's really quite a nasty sound. Basically the point is you will not be wanting to play with the settings too much. I do find that increasing the treble a little bit does actually make it sound a little bit better. I mean it's not it doesn't sound bad uh, unless you start playing with the sound settings. So as it stands with flat sound it's okay to listen to. It's, it's not bad. It's not fantastic either. It's fine for the money that you're paying for it. Now before I move on to Android Auto, let me show you what else it can do with an iPhone. It has iPhone mirroring. So if we tap this, it says prepare for connecting. Logging in. Now you can see that the head unit is actually showing me what's on the screen of my phone. So that means if I touch one of these videos and then what I do is I turn this this way and as you can see, it's turned that way on the actual head unit as well. So you can watch videos. Uh, as you can see, it works. Little bit jittery, but it does function okay. And you're broadcasting on a screen that is smaller than the originating phone. So I'm not really sure why you do this, but it does work. And that's the main thing. All right, let's try Android Auto. So I'm gonna plug my Galaxy Fold 4 into it now. Connecting in. Okay. Oh. And as you can see, it's gone straight back to playing music again. So this is the new style of Android Auto. So it is utilizing the new software on the phone, which is great. So I've got access to my maps here, which is lagging quite badly. And then we have my audio tracks here. Let me just go into the other apps. Yeah, okay, everything is there, ways. It's quite slow, but it is working. And Spotify. Yeah, so all of that's working absolutely fine. So you're probably gonna ask me, would I be wasting my money if I bought this? And the answer is no. No, I don't think you are, because it's such a low priced unit, and the fact that it comes with a reverse camera as well, and a couple of remote controls that you probably never use, and it actually has a touch screen, a touch screen. It's amazing touch screen on a little single DIN device, which is actually compatible with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on a single DIN. So yeah, it is worth the money. Could it be better? Yes, obviously it could be much, much better than this, but then obviously you'd have to pay additional money. But this is actually the only head unit that I've seen that retains that single dim form factor and uh, have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on a touch screen. So that's the positive side of it. I hope this video is useful for you. If you have any questions at all, please use the comment section below and ask them and I'll see what I can do about answering them. If there's any other head units that you'd like me to have a look at before you purchase them, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. And of course, if you like this kind of content, please do subscribe to my channel because there will be more shortly.